والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله ويلكم to way of the Muslim defining the Muslim character I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking more about the subject of the personality and character of the Muslim, based on the teachings or hadith of Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. I'd like to begin this episode by mentioning a hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, talked about the angel Gabriel, called Jibril in the Arabic language. He says, Jibril... Gabriel, came to me and he said, O Muhammad, live as though you will certainly die, and love whom you will, since you most certainly will leave him, and act as you will, since you will certainly be given reward for it, and know that the believer's eminence is his standing in prayer during the night, and his honor is having sufficiency without dependency upon the people. To elaborate on this a bit and see how it will benefit our development of character, I'd like to mention something to you. This Jibril, Gabriel, the angel here, in fact is the same Gabriel that you know from the previous revelations. And he's the one sent by Allah. And he has a title, by the way, called the Ruh Qudus, which means the Holy or the Sacred Spirit. And when the sacred spirit, Ruh Qudus, Jibril, is coming to Muhammad Sallallahu this is a form of revelation. And he's saying something to Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he wants, of course, him to narrate onto us so we can learn how to develop our character. And that's exactly what this program is designed to do. We hope that it will work for me and for all of us. And it says that when he comes to the Prophet Muhammad, he says, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, live as you will. Live any way you want to, because you will certainly die. Love anybody you want to, and know that certainly, eventually, you're going to leave that person, or that person's going to leave you. Meaning what? Even if you're married to somebody, eventually one of the two of you is going to die. The same holds true for your parents and everybody in your life. Eventually, they're going to leave you. And then he continues. Act as you will, meaning do what you want to do because you're going to be given reward for it. Now, the way this is translated, you might think reward is something good. But the way it's understood from the Arabic is you're going to be compensated either way. If you do good, yes, you'll be rewarded. But if it's something bad, then obviously it means that you're going to be punished. So do what you will do and realize that you're going to be paid according to that. Good for good, bad for bad. And on the day of judgment, a person's going to see their bad even if it's an atom's weight. And they're going to see their good, even if it's an Adam's way. And this is something to keep in mind. And it says, know that the believer's eminence, eminence is meaning high status, is his standing in prayer during the night. You know, we had a segment where we talked about this before, but I want to repeat that again. You know, it's essential for the Muslim to pray five times a day. You can't leave that and still consider yourself to be a Muslim in good standing. But once you have that in place, the regular salat five times a day, this is something beautiful. It's not just something to do in worship. It's something to do to grow inside and to take a benefit in this life and the next life. It's called Qiyam al to get up in the night 
and how sweet it is because you're getting up in the night and you're going in and washing up to get ready to pray put on something nice as though you're going to meet somebody very important and then you stand there all alone silently nobody knows and you're worshiping your lord you're doing what he wants you to do it is so amazing and you start slow as we mentioned before and build it up You'd pray two and then one all by itself and ask Allah. And when you raise your hands in the night like that and you ask Allah, do you know, as it was mentioned in one of the other hadiths that we talked about, that Allah is going to answer these prayers, this dua. So that's an important part of this hadith as well, talking about standing in the night. And this is an eminence. This is, you want to be raised up high in dignity and eminence like a king. Well, this is how you can do it with Allah. Get up and pray. That's the best standing you can do. And the honor for the believer is to have sufficiency without dependency on other people. What does that mean? What you have, make it be enough so that you don't have to go out and beg from others or borrow from others or impugn others to help you with your difficulties. If you said, well, I need a bigger TV set or I need to have a fancier car. I need to have a new washing machine. I can't get by with the old one, blah, blah, blah. All of this is doing what? It's showing that you're having a dependency and you have a need. Now you say, well, I don't have enough money. Let me see if I can borrow it over here from my father, from my mother, from my cousin, from my neighbor, and I need to borrow. And I need to get something over here. I'll pay you back, guys. But you see, you're coming to people and depending and depending. And really when you have self-sufficiency, it gives you a peace of mind. And it also helps you in this clear thinking of what a real Muslim is supposed to be thinking about. And that's not being dependent on others, but rather that you're going to be dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that we all depend on. So and I think that helps us to get a better understanding of that particular hadith. I want to move now to another one. And this one is dealing on the subject of charity. Sadaqah. In Arabic it talks about charity or sadaqah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is saying, and this is on the authority of Abu Huraira, he says that the Prophet said, charity is due on every joint of a person on every day that the sun rises. Administering justice between two people is an act of charity. And to help a man concerning his riding animal by helping him on or off or lifting his luggage onto it is an act of charity. A good word is an act of charity. And every step you take to go for your salah or your prayer is charity. And removing that which is harmful from the road is also charity. These are all acts of sadaqa. Because the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that every joint in your body is due an act of charity. And this is on a daily basis. Every day that the sun rises, you've got to come up with some acts of charity. But there are many acts of charity that you can perform. And this is giving you some idea about what that is. First, and it mentions here, that administering justice. Administering justice between two people is an act of charity. And helping a man on or off of his horse, his animal, is an act of charity. Helping him get his luggage up. Well, I know people don't ride horses that much anymore. So you can help somebody in and out of the car. You can open the door for somebody the next time you go to the supermarket. You can make things easy for people. Removing obstructions or objects out of people's way. You know, when you're in the grocery store, you move a basket over so somebody can pass by. It's just the kindness that you're doing here that's being granted as an act of charity for you. How about this one? Did you know the Prophet ﷺ told us that a smile in the face of your brother is an act of charity? Now that's an amazing statement. Think about that. When was the last time you just went around smiling all the time? Of course, I've visited some countries like Egypt, for instance, when I found everybody over there smiles all the time. I think they should call that the country of smiling people. <laughs> and I guess that's true because they have a lot of reward of charity there. 
I wanted to uh, elaborate on something else about charity. There is the zakat in Islam, which is the type of charity that's due as an obligation that must be paid. You shouldn't confuse this with the zakat with the sadaqa. Don't confuse that which is an obligation on you to pay every year with this type of charity because this is on a daily basis. It comes up every day and you want to do your best to be able to suffice this charity that's due. And the best way, as we said, is to follow what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us here. This develops character, by the way. In the case where you have wealth and you'd like to donate and give things, that's certainly an act of charity. In the case where that you would like to perhaps offer meat to some poor people, have an animal slaughtered and give it out, that's an act of charity. But these are acts of charity here that can be done by the poorest man on earth. Even if he doesn't have money at all, he can still help other people in their daily lives and make their lives easy for them. And all of that's going to be counted as what? An act of charity. So may Allah give us the strength, courage, understanding, and wisdom to do that on a daily basis. Here's another one that I found very interesting in the Prophet ﷺ said this. He said that richness is not having a lot of belongings, but richness is the richness of the soul, the richness of the nafs in Arabic. And I want you to think about something that impressed me years and years ago when I got into Islam. I was always before that a businessman. I love business, and I love to deal in that. But one of the things that I learned after I got into Islam is the true meaning behind a statement that says, success is getting what you want, but happiness, contentment, is wanting what you get. And think about that. You could want and want and you get it, but it doesn't satisfy you. So you feel like, you know what? I want more. So you... Go out and you try to get more. And you get it. I wanted this, now I got it. Am I happy? Am I content? Because there's a big difference between these two. A lot of people are in emotional turmoil. They have to go to the doctor for medicine, for pills, for treatment, for their you know, psyche because they don't know how to deal with the difference of these two things. The richness is not in the bounties that you have in your house, the, the big house, or the fancy car. No, the richness is going to come when the heart is content. And the heart's not going to be content until what? Until we begin to realize what Allah gave us is all that we needed. And this is another good form of character development for the Muslim. We're going to be back and talk about this more, inshallah, in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Allah.